Fear and death have determined fear of life. A man who lives fully is prepared to die at any time. Mark Twain. Two weeks later, Mary had got tuberculosis. She tried to hide it, but her parents found her blood spattered pillow from her nighttime coughing fits. I hired the best doctor I could to take a look at her, despite her parents' objections that they needed no charity. It wasn't for them that I did, but for my own reassurance. He confirmed the fearful prognosis, confined her to bed, and gave her some special tonic to help treat it. She was given a 50% chance of survival due to her overall health and stubbornness in which she accepted her fate. Samuel, you're stepping on my toes! Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's okay, just pay attention. Mary had me worried terribly, but my responsibilities to Martha, to my estate, really, took up a large portion of my free time. Martha was a sweet girl, though not unlike the other girls who glanced my way. It was obvious she was attracted to me, but I couldn't make myself let go of Mary. Martha saw this in me, every time I brought up Mary in our conversations, of the fondness I expressed for my friend, my true beloved. I'm glad to see you two enjoying yourselves. Oh yes, he's such a good dancer. That's good to hear. If I may break you up for a moment, I wish to speak with my son. Okay, I'll be sitting at the table. She's very perky. I have just spoken to George and asked for your permission to marry Martha. Father! I'm a grown man who... Who has spent too long ignoring the situation we're in. You have a responsibility to this estate and to the family. Business has not improved much since Rosenberg's death. Which is why I keep asking you to give me a chance at your work. I'm no longer a ten-year-old who needs constant supervision. No! You will ask Martha for her hand in marriage, tonight, before they go to bed. And for Christ's sake, you will put aside your sin infatuation with that peasant girl rotting in her bed. She's in a condition to help maintain the household, and will probably be dead in a few months anyway. You bastard! Don't talk to me like that! You will ask her, tonight. I will be watching you very closely, same. Why people be so stubborn and stupid? Oh, hey! Wait, what? I can actually take. Okay. Me. <laughs> I want to. I hate it. If I loved you less, I could buy more. If she's really getting better, there's no need to fret over her. I'm sorry. Surely you can understand my concern for her. I've known her for more than half of my life. She's a dear friend. I know she is. But you've barely spent any time with me. If we are to be married, I want to know more of my future husband. I <sighs> want to know he cares for me just as much as I care for him. I do care for you. You can still be friends with her when we're married. I know how much she means to you. I don't want to get between your friendship, but I need reassurance you aren't marrying me for convenience. Well, there's no that. Martha, dear, I'm not marrying you for convenience. You're a sweet girl who no doubt is suitable for intelligent conversation and child rearing. You'll make a fine wife for me, and I will do everything in my power to be a dutiful husband you require. Dutiful, yes. But can you be loving? Can't put him on the spot there. Like no, I know. I don't think anyone who's in a forced marriage starts out. I just heard the news from my mother. You are engaged to George Harrison's daughter. Yes, yes I am. I've met her before. She's a nice girl. 
I think you two would make a great couple. If I had a choice, it would be you I'd marry. <laughs> don't, don't say that. You know it wouldn't work, even if I got through this. Don't say that. You're getting stronger. You're fighting it. You'll be climbing the mountains with me in a month. Samuel, all I want is for you to be happy. Don't cling to me. You were destined to have a life different from mine. You don't... reciprocate? Samuel, please, don't make this harder for either of us. I have to go. I'll... I'll talk to you later, Mary. glass bottle. Little shiny glass bottle. Little shiny glass bottle that has something that is pretty important to the rest of the city. But it won't stay on the table anymore. <laughs> and here's another point where the music's just way too perky. Or at least, like, it's very dramatic. That's a lot of potatoes. This family likes eating potatoes. Is there something in there? Oh, um, there's stairs right there. Not the stairs first before I grab the potato. So, so never stops carrying this potatoes. Whatever he's like to use. Letter. Samuel's proposal. Marcia, listen. We've had the most wonderful news. Samuel is to marry George Harrison's daughter, Mark. It was such a shock to me as I thought he surely, as I surely thought he had no interest in girls at all. He's just like his father, stubborn and stoic, but with a, heart, with a soft heart. To a select few, certainly not to his own mother. Martha is such a sweet girl, and here at the estate, I still have a chance to meet him. I'm sure you'll find her a different man. Give Mary my best wishes. From what I hear, she's doing fine, and she'll be up and about in no time. She was always just a little, and it's not surprising to me that she's on the road to recovery. Love, Abigail Crompton. Well, thanks, Mom. You practically broke up. Mary's ailment. Dear diary. Nothing possesses the suffering power of a fatal disease. The consumption has been bedridden, and on occasion I find myself bloody in handkerchiefs with fluids in my lungs. I bad day. The more I think of my infatuation with Jane's death, the more I wish she would leave me. I love him terribly. The more I think of our situation, the more I realize that I never want for him. Even if I survive this ordeal, he will have given his love to someone else. Someone more deserving of it than an invalid. Someone double prepared for the disease peasant girl. Someone charming, someone pretty, someone who knows how to act like a lady. I just wanted to myself that when he next arrives, I will redirect his attention elsewhere. It will be the toughest thing I have ever done. But I shall have to do it. It's not me. Send me. Wow. Gah! Tragic love stories. And so I left. I couldn't live the rest of my life.
dreaming of a future that would never come to fruition. As long as Mary was part of my life, I would never be able to get over her. My only option was to forget she existed. It was a selfish thing to do, but necessary. This is where it starts getting just like ridiculously sad. I was faster in speed of light with the possible exception of bad news, which obeys its own special laws. Mostly harmless by Douglas Adams. Another reason why this guy's my hero. He quotes Jane Austen and Douglas Adams in the same mod. children in the afternoon while they're in school and standing Are you feeling all right, Samuel? Of course I am. Why do you ask? There's something different about you. You seem less tense. Oh, that's a bad thing? Of course not. It's just not like you to be relaxed. <laughs> Maybe it's because I have a beautiful fiancé. Well, I'm glad you think so. Just out of curiosity, have you visited Mary lately? Um, I, I guess not. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have mentioned it. I just know she's your friend, and well... It's okay. Well, I have to go before it gets dark. We're still moving things into the house, and I'll need to straighten things up for tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow? Yes, I'll stop by after work. Have a good night. Never I could use a drink. Maybe I should curl up in the wine cellar and pass out. Great idea. Let's go get What do I have in the key and have meat? Just kind of meat. Because meat is amazing. Getting drunk is fun. I'm a child, so we can right now. We're currently at 21 right now. Get it when the noise is coming just in front of the headphones. It drives me nuts. Idea. And we passed out. <laughs> Master Crenton! Young Master Crenton! Hmm? Well, what? what? What's wrong? Gregory? What do you have for your face? Mary has. Oh, oh god, I wish it wasn't so. What? She's eaten. Wait, what's happened? What's wrong with Mary? She Olives. passed on early this morning. I'm so sorry, sir. Well, that's depressing. It took an eternity to register. Mary. Tuberculosis. The Red Death. She had finally been overcome. People die all the time from it. It's no surprise she's dead. It was only a matter of time. She can't be dead! Friend, she can't yeah. be out of reach! She was healthy. Bad. She was recovering. Where is she? Okay. Where is she now? Is she home? Is she in heaven? She's in heaven. Memories of her just came rushing back. Of the mountains we've climbed. Of the mischief we managed when mom had her back turned. We spent many an hour in the attic. Organizing old papers and 
sifting through old family records. I have to find you! Where were you vetting yourself? Are you my house? Should I rush out the front door and find you smiling with warm eyes and popping blood? I'll find you. I'll be there. Oh, the real question is, do you want the good ending or the bad ending? Good ending, bad. Good ending, bad. Good ending, bad ending. Good ending, bad. Good ending, bad ending. I don't know. What's the good ending? Do I have the good ending? Or should I have the bad ending? The bad ending is just life fun, don't you agree? How can I get the good ending? The bad ending. So which, which is more important? Having my own, having my fun, having my pleasure and fun. I really don't know what I want to do. But, you know, I like the happy ending better. So we will go for that. And maybe I will. Which one I want. Unless, of course, it's just decides to be better because it's not open. Stay open. I have a tendency to do that. There are quite a number of them. Like I said, it seems there's a lot of generation tender boxes and people have it up and use It's very oddly shaped. Cut off. Don't you just love cut off? Of course, I'm pretty sure the actual game has cut off in some places too. It's pretty hard to remember. Just. I can always just put stuff in it wherever I like. Just like, ah. Oh. That would have been a trial, but I'm sure we could have done something. Okay. Everything includes me. So, yes, yeah, nice to go. I put the good in it, obviously. Well, maybe not so long. May as well. Dear Diary. No. Dear Summer. If you are reading this, then I am dead. I was surprised yesterday by the arrival of your fiancé, Martha. I could not imagine why she would be visiting me. She asked me how I was doing. We talked briefly about the weather. How is it that this is always the default topic of conversation when one needs time to put their thoughts together? I spoke lightly for what felt like aeons, but she eventually asked about this. 
she wanted to know about how we felt for each other. How about you were like underneath that, underneath that stupid. And I know what's inside of you, Sam. The quiet, seething fury of your desires. You want what you cannot have. And if you cannot get what you seek, you will fury upon the world. I will always love you till my dying. Day. You will always be my inspiration to boost your passion. But you must let go. Ever since the day you brought the strength of culture, and I could feel the icy veil of death in a shrunk room, the moment still tears at my eyes. Talking with Martha, that icy veil became warm blanket. She is tender and caring, and I believed her when she professed her own love for you. Do not wallow in self-pity, Samuel. You deserve her, and she is. I feel myself drifting to sleep, but I shall never wake again. When I'm gone, do not push her away. Pull her closer, for I will live through her inside you forever. Oh. This was in her hand. This was in her hand when I saw her body in the bed. The bottle of turpentine was full to the brim, untouched, except for the small glasses that lay beside her bed, with the dead rats on the floor. She died for me, so that I could live my life. She had given me her strength, so that I could go on. A selfless sacrifice for a selfish man. I loved her for all of these reasons. She could find positive in everything, even in death. <sighs> Reading that was. Are you alright? What's wrong? Where am I? You're here in bed with me. Did you have a nightmare? <laughs> You're sweating. Are you ill? No, no. I'm yes. fine. I'm fine. I just... I'm fine. Everything's okay now. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, I'm okay. I'm sorry for waking you. I'm just lying. It's okay, Sam. Good night and sweet dreams. Yes, good night. 
Good night, my love. Aww. I love that last line. Because it shows that he really accepted her. Finally. It makes me sad, though. But, you know, it's the way of life. Grief can take care of itself. But to get the full value of a joy, you must have somebody to divide it with. Mark Twain. And that was my love. Really good custom, I must say. And there's Chaotic Monkey, aka Cry, who has the most amazing voice on the face of the planet. He's right up there with uh, Roger Craig Smith and my favorite voices. <laughs> he seriously should be a voice actor too. I mean, sure he can do whatever he wants, but I would highly recommend him he look at least look into voice acting. Anyway, that was a good custom story. It was well made. It was like I always love how interesting it is that they they found a way to make it seem like there were characters there even though you know, there are no models for other characters in the game. The only other model would be, well, aside from, like, the monsters, the only model is Alexander. And, you know, all he is is a floating naked old man, and that's just awkward. This has been a GTI production. Yay! Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my playthrough of this custom story. If you want it without commentary, you can watch Cry's playthrough of it. Um, yes. And I will probably go to bed now and edit this video in the morning. Or afternoon or something. So, good night and good night. <laughs>